If you've only ever seen a Patasaurus in diagrams next to Brachiosaurus or Diplodocus, you could be forgiven for thinking this guy's on the runty side for a sauropod. But don't let this lizard deceive you. This guy is anything but small. Even in the movies, like Jurassic World where he shows up, it can be hard to gauge how big he really is. The name Apatosaurus means deceptive lizard, and that name comes from the neck. Unique shapes on the neck bones made early paleontologists think that they might have come from a large marine reptile like Mosasaurus, but we'll talk more about that neck a little bit later on. While this model and a lot of older ones you might be familiar with will show Apatosaurus lifting their heads way high in the air, some newer paleontologists argue that Apatosaurus should hold his head straight out in front of him. This would mean that Apatosaurus is more focused on mid-level browsing and not eating mostly from the ground or mostly from the treetops. While the long-necked dinosaurs are called long-necked dinosaurs, the Diplodocid family with guys like Apatosaurus and Diplodocus tend to have longer tails than they do necks. Although I think our Apatosaurus is either really tired or really hurt because they shouldn't drag their tails on the ground like this. Apatosaurus and Diplodocus would have had very similar heads in life. A lot of the features are going to be in about the same place. You're going to have the nose on top, sort of weird, but for a long-necked dinosaur, eh, it's not that strange. And the eye would be at the top of this hole here. They also would share the overall shape of the skull and these long, peg-like teeth sticking out the front, less for chewing and more for shoveling food down their gullet. Though we didn't always know that this is the kind of skull a Patasaurus should have had. Originally, paleontologists were using skulls like this to help fill in their Apatosaurus reconstructions. This is from Camarasaurus, another long-necked dinosaur that lived in the same place and time. But I don't need to tell you, this doesn't look anything like the Diplodocus skull we were just talking about. And that's very close to a Patasaurus. Though this does still have all the same parts in roughly the same place, the eye would be here in the top of this hole, and the nose would be somewhere in this much larger hole. And I don't need to point out where the teeth are, but I will say they're much different teeth, being bigger and having a more spoon-like shape to them. Apatosaurus's neck is one of the things that separates it from a lot of its closer relatives in the long-necked dinosaur group. You can see the neck has a very unique shape to it, having little ridges pointing from the bottom all down the length. And from a head-on view, you can see it gets extremely wide at the bottom, giving it a triangular look in front view. That is something not shared by most members of its family, guys like Diplodocus here. That's because Apatosaurus has uniquely shaped cervical ribs. These are ribs that come off of the neck bones, usually in dinosaurs. They're there to help support the esophagus or the trachea or muscles that attach. But on Apatosaurus, they're so heavily fortified that some paleontologists guess these guys might have been smacking each other around with their necks, similar to what giraffes can do today. So, if you've got any questions about Apatosaurus or the long-necked dinosaurs, feel free to come on down. We've only touched the surface with these animals today. I haven't thought of anything to say yet. <laughs>